It is an honor to be at the 15th annual townie meeting in Las Vegas with a speaker. How many times have we brought you back? You know, I think this is the fourth, third or fourth time. Third or fourth time. He's definitely a dental town townie meeting hall of famer. Um, you crushed it yesterday at your lecture. Thank you, Howard. Thank you so much for speaking. Uh, I hope you come next year. Um, after 15 years, we're switching the venue to Orlando. Oh, awesome. But you, um, you did something interesting. You, um, you're... A lot of these people listening to you are trying to start their practice, and you just sold your practice. You're at the tail end of practice ownership. Talk, talk about that. Right. This was really pretty amazing. You know, I've had the privilege of being in private practice since 1986, and I bought basically a bankrupt practice, 10-year-old practice, three operatories, three employees. I started six weeks later. The receptionist quit. I fired the hygienist, and I had one dental assistant, one teammate left. As I love to say, God smiled upon me. I went to a Linda Miles seminar, and Linda <laughs> took me under her wing. And then Kathy Jamison and Gordon Christensen and just the giants of dentistry, Erwin Becker from Banky. So I'm so grateful for that. And I brought in a series of young superstar dentists and basically would teach them everything I knew. And then after a year, they would move on and do their own practice. So that became a real frustration. And I almost was at the point that I built something that I couldn't sell. And I just saw what was the point. I'd moved to a new facility with eight operatories of ADEC equipment and two Seracs and eight DigiDoc control cameras and lasers. And I had everything except I couldn't find someone to transition the practice. And then one of my former students from UNC Chapel Hill, I'm an adjunct full professor at UNC, someone I had taught in 1999. His wife is a pediatric dentist, Dr. Sonia Sharani and Dr. Steve Hatcher. Had heard, I had taught him when he was a first year dental student turns out he was practicing two buildings away from me and at the time we he had the second largest practice in Greensboro North Carolina and we had the largest so instead of finding a young person right out of school this is someone who'd been through Panky Dawson Spear Carl Mish implants and so basically he wanted to focus his practice on doing impacted wisdom teeth CAD cam restorations placing dental implants sedation cases and molar endo under a microscope with the Zeiss microscope. So that was everything that I was sending out because I was so busy just doing my restorative stuff. So we kind of merged two battleships together and that just really became amazing, Howard. It's something that you used to always piss me off with and, and inspire me is saying, you're not busy enough, learn to do other things, expand what you're doing. And so this was an example of somebody finding a niche, finding a very successful practice that said, Man, here's a practice that's sending out all the wisdom teeth, all the root canals, all the implants, because we were already doing a several million dollar a year just with restorative dentistry. And um, so it was a brilliant business move for Dr. Hatcher. It was brilliant for me because at this stage in my career, I really wanted to focus on teaching and mentoring and coaching. And I still love practicing. I'm practicing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday every week. I'm pretty much in the speaking world, as you know, dentists don't do continue education. June, July, August, December, and they don't take CE courses Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday generally. So my Thursdays, I was already seeing patients seven to one running to the airport, wolfing a turkey sandwich, and then flying to wherever to speak Friday or Saturday. So this has been a tremendous win-win thing. You do the disc po profile on the whole office. I had pretty much filled my office with high eye, high expressive, influencing, cheerleader, enthusiastic people where Dr. Hatcher had a more focus on more of the high analytic and drivers, systems and processes where I was more of a big picture person. So the merger's been unbelievable. We complement each other. I, I would have never thought it had gone as well as it, would, as it has. Um, I can't, I'm past president of our dental society. Dr. Hatcher was past president. Howard, I can't tell you how many people came up to us at the first dental society meeting and they kind of look around and go, how's it going? And I'm like, really well. And they're like, no, really, how's it going? I'm like, really well. And Hatcher comes up to me later and says, you know how many people came up to me and said, how's it going? And just like, a bunch of losers. But uh, it's been a joy for me. If I'm in the middle of a complicated procedure, he'll jump in and finish something for me. If he's behind on something, I'll jump in and finish it for him. So it's just kind of the classic business, Stephen Covey, it's win, win, or no deal. And uh, it's been a joy. So Greensboro, is that a suburb of Charlotte? Greensboro, North Carolina. It's in the center of North Carolina. It's 90 minutes from Charlotte. It's about an hour from Chapel Hill. 
It's two and a half hours from snow skiing, three hours from the beach center of the state. I want to know, honestly, though, how, really seriously, how is it going after that NFL Super Bowl loss? Um, you know, that's from the Falcons. <laughs> we can see, I'm a Carolina Panther fan. We don't have pro football in North Carolina. We have the Panthers. But uh, two, two years ago, the Super Bowl, man, we came close. That was pretty awesome. Oh, my God. That was I pretty awesome. Bet my house, car, and two grandkids. I mean, that was a gimme. You had old Grandpa Peyton Manning with neck injuries, and then you had your quarterback that could dive and do a flip and land on his feet over the line. Yeah. That wasn't even going to be a game. You know, we couldn't protect him. The line let us down, and they put Cam on his butt too many times, and he panicked. You know, I'm... I always say I'm my my one stupid vice is the NFL, and I always say I'm glad I'm not a gambler because whenever I have a sure bet, you know it, where I I could bet my house, I lose every time. So I'm uh, you know for the NCAA pool every year I pick North Carolina going all the way and Duke losing in the first round just on principle because I love <laughs> my Tar Heels and I hate Duke. And uh, this year I would have been close to right because Duke lost in the second round and the Heels won. And it was the same thing this year in the Super Bowl at halftime. I would have bet my house well, at halftime. I mean, there was no way Peyton Manning. I mean, uh, the the uh, uh, there was no way no the, way the uh, Patriots were going to win. The Patriots can win. Yeah, I mean Arthur Blank, the owner of the Falcons. If you saw that, he'd already left the press the uh, luxury box. He was down on the field with his wife. Yeah. To the end of the third quarter, I mean they they were ready to party. Oh I think my that was God. that was one I'm of the so great faux glad. pas ever. I got a lot of faults, but I'm, the luckiest one is I'm not a gambler. I'd yeah. Be, I'd be I'd be broke if I was a gambler. Um. So, but I, w- I want to go back to beginning because, um, you know, 35 years ago, there were some guys out there screaming really loud, like Rick Kirshner of Comfort sure. Dental saying that he saw no evidence of associates working. He says, if they're good and they, they ramp up and they learn and they take seed and they get real good, they fly the gate to open up their own. And if they stay, they're not going to make enough money. If you're lucky, you'll break even and just have some time off or something with your yeah. office covered. But you're not. So basically, he was saying, if they're good, they're going to fly the coop, and if they're no good, they're going to stay. And you wish they wouldn't. Um, was that your experience for 30 years? You know, my first associate was a fabulous woman, Dennis. Stayed with me eight and a half years. She actually had bought in 25 percent of the practice. Just we really practiced different styles, and um, and she wanted to continue practicing in her style, and I wanted to grow and do other things. So we separated very lovingly I see her we hug and kiss and life is cool then I brought in two superstars who again when I see them big hugs at dental society loved working with them every minute with them but when you've got a very ambitious go-getting person that's gone through undergrad and dental school and residency they don't want to be an employee and when I first brought in people Howard I wasn't ready to transition the leadership at this time I was ready so I think that was big the big thing Early on, I had the misconception. I brought in a woman dentist. Half the people in dental school are women. A lot of women want their health care providers for women. That made sense to me. Just wasn't the right choice for a long-term relationship. And uh, for these young guns, it just it was a disappointment, but I, I am very proud of them. They, they're both tremendously successful. Well, the, the point I'm trying to ask you is now that, you know, we, we've, we've been around the block a few times on this thing. A couple, couple rounds. We're, 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 we're the ends of our careers, and I don't think the person cut out to go four years of undergrad and four years of dental school and be a doctor is the personality that says, I want to be your employee. I think that's correct, and almost always. And everybody in corporate is like, oh, no, they, they all want to be employees. I'm like, look, I know Homo sapien, and Homo sapien doesn't want to be under anybody's thumb. No. He wants his own cave. He doesn't want, he doesn't want to take mass transit. He wants his own horse, his own car. I mean, that, that's an American. And yeah. I, I don't think um, these dentists want to be employees. And some of these big corporate chains... They only keep their average associate dentist for 12 months. That's terrible. I mean, it, but, God bless them. But, 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 here, but here's the dilemma. So we don't know what's going to change. I didn't see the cell phone coming. I didn't see, I didn't see so many of these things right. coming down the pipe. So I don't know what's coming. But I can look back over 2 million years of human beings. And they don't, they don't want to be an employee. They don't right. want to be under your thumb. They don't, want to, they don't want transparency. They don't like checks and balances. Now they, they, these monkeys want their own home, their own business. But, the, but here's what she says. 
I, I have to be an employee at, at Aspen because I got three hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars in student loans. What would you tell her, Liz? She's driving to work right now in corporate, and she's saying, "I wish I owned my own office like Mark Hyman did for thirty years." But how, how, can I do that with three hundred fifty thousand dollars student loans, or See, is that I, just I, too I, risky? I think you absolutely can do it. I think a whole lot of people put a whole lot into me, and I think you have to be willing to borrow some more money and invest in yourself with quality continuing education like Panky, Dawson, Coy, Spear. I think you have to take a Dale Carnegie class, particularly the millennial generation, Howard. You and I, you and I communicate differently, but in a similar style with a lot of passion and enthusiasm and commitment and humor. You tend to go blue a little more than I do, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I got better hair, but you, you know, I have better jump shot, but you could probably outrun me. Um, I think the human relation principles of how to talk to people make eye contact and focus and connect and use some humor and passion and enthusiasm to get what you want. I don't think that's an, an inherent skill in this generation because they're spending their time online, video gamed um, with their cell phone. So I think everybody ought to take a Dale Carnegie class. I mean, why would you want to study material titled How to Win Friends and, Friends and Influence People? Because it's time-tested, amazing, basic human relations principles. So I think... That's imperative. It's you spend funny. small money for a massive long-term result. It, it's funny because, you know, the, the, these people have to see Gordon Christian every year where the first half of the day, all he talks about is the wear rates of all the composites. Yeah. And it's like, do all your fillings wear down? I, I didn't know that was a problem. And then the whole afternoon is the bonding rates. Um, how many megapascals each, each thing. And it's like, so, so let me get this right. So all your fillings wear down and then they fall out? And then you go in there and, and you start talking about win friends and influence people. And they're like, well, that's the soft stuff. That's voodoo. I, I, don't, I don't want any, uh, what do they call that? Uh, fluff. Yeah. Now, now you're talking fluff. Yet that person, the, the dentistry on the insurance data, for every 100 cavities diagnosed, America only drills, fills, and bills 38. And so they want to talk about composite and bonding rate all day long when they don't even do two out of three cavities. Well, and what you're talking about would, is better dentistry because if you could just get one of those other two to get their cavity fixed, then you'd be twice as good of a dentist who only fixes one in three. You know, I bought my practice in 1986. I paid it off in 1989. So I, I bought it July 1st, 86, paid it off January 89 because of human relation principles. Do my composites wear and fall out? <laughs> Plenty of them, but that's <laughs> that's because I'm not a good dentist. But uh, you know, it, you look at the men and women that went into dentistry inherently are scientists and engineers. They don't understand that once you get in practice, once you run a business, that doesn't really have virtually anything to do with your success. You know, we're all going to be within a technical range of competence to excellence, and I respect that. But I, I, I think it's a tragedy that we see things, changes going on in patients' mouths, and we can't engage them to own their problems and say yes. So at another time, you're going to have with the premier intro camera folks on the digidoc people and that'll be really powerful I, I still am amazed when i lecture and i'll ask how many of you have an intro camera and i see hands go up and i'll ask how many of you use a camera every day every patient every procedure before during and after and three percent of the audience has their hand up and i point them out and say swear to god are you in top five percent of your community yes are you top five percent yes are you top five percent yes Dale Carnegie says three magic words, success leaves clues. What do highly successful men and women do? We're scientists and engineers. If you don't have the gift of gab, you put a picture in front of somebody. So that's been one of the great things I've ever done. I started with intro cameras in 1991. I started buying DigiDocs in the year 2000. I bought four versions of the camera. We have eight ops. We have eight cameras. We take pictures on every patient, every procedure, period. And it's just transformational. It makes all the difference in the world. So, so that, that's what I would wish when I hear a young dentist say, well, Dr. Mark, I'm 200 grand in debt. Out. If I can show you how to add $1,000 a day, you work 200 days a year, that's 200 grand. Bang, I can get you out of $200,000 debt in a year. But you've got to invest a little bit more money in a camera. You've got to promise me you use it every patient, every procedure. And then it is ball game. That's the simplest thing that people can do. So... Why, why DigiDoc? I just went to their website, um, DigiDoc. It's a number one rated camera by Reality Magazine. It's American made. You know, they, uh, it's got the 
finest picture. It's got, you can take a full face picture. They have a little attachment Is called it a durable? glow. I mean, if I took a full face of my face, would it, would it break the camera? Um, you know, it would test it, but I think it could pull it through because <laughs> it works well with the handicapped. <laughs> you know, the, the interesting piece of that, further, they've got a really cool piece of technology called Nighthawk. Doctors, you make an investment in this technology. You say, well, my team won't use it, or are they taking quality photos? They've got a software program, Howard, that will document how many photos were taken and what the quality were. So that's unbelievable. I've never heard about that in dentistry. So doctors say, oh, I'll buy the camera. It's less than five grand, man. This is a chance for your listeners, Howard, to buy Google at two. This is your chance to get Berkshire Hathaway at a hundred bucks a share. You pay less than five grand for a camera that guarantees to make you a hundred, two hundred grand a year. I just retweeted their Twitter. On Twitter, they're at Digital Doc LLC. And uh, where where are they? Uh, where are they're they? out of California. They're out of California. So they're a bunch of pot smoking hippies. Mm, they, they, you could call them that, except the actually the owners they live in Arizona, they live in uh, Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah. My sister lives in Arkansas. You know that is. And she uh, has teeth. And you, you, um, you live in the other state. Um, when I start out lecturing, you know, um, the neatest thing about lecturing is you got to see the whole world. Sure. I grew up in Kansas. I never saw you know much, but to me, the two biggest surprises of all the states I ever saw was Arkansas and the Carolinas, because you had four seasons, none extreme. Yep. It, it's the most overlooked underrated two states in beauty cleanliness quality people yeah we'd love i love i'm a tar heel i love living in north carolina oh my god we, when you say north gorgeous. carolina south carolina we describe that as a difference of culture and agriculture <laughs> but that's okay and um and actually being from north carolina you're not even sure what bathroom to use anymore but because we got the crazies have taken over politically but you know, um, it is a great place to live. It's a great place to raise a family. And it's a sensational place to be a dentist. Um, we have a couple bozos, as everybody does. But the leadership in the state of North Carolina, we've had two past presidents, the ADA. We've got four or five past presidents, the AAE. Um, so, and just a wonderful place to live you know, and enjoy. You know why that, that transgender bathroom issue uh, confuses me? Is because I mean I I, yeah, I can't make this up. I, I'm from Kansas, yep. and at every family reunion we've ever had, when anybody needed to go to the bathroom, they just whiz right there on the tree. So we, <laughs> we we don't even we don't even use bathrooms and public bathrooms when that includes when your sister, your five oh sisters. Oh my God! When when you're out there fishing by the river and you got to go to the bathroom, Grandma right there, right right in the poison ivy. I mean, it was just we, you know, it was a solution to a problem that didn't <laughs> exist. Yeah, and we, it was a shame. It cost us billions of dollars in revenue as, as the sporting events went away and all the musicians canceled their concerts. But more importantly, it was an embarrassment to a state that really is sensational. We used to be top 10 in the country in our education spending. Now we're like 47th. So the whole state, we're making a comeback. we got a great new governor and uh, the dental leadership Who's is strong. Who's the new strong. governor? Uh, man, Roy Cooper. Republican, Democrat? Uh, he's a very conservative Democrat. He was a, a Moorhead scholar at UNC Chapel Hill state attorney general for many years and just uh, a brilliant man and a humble man and um, and he's just saying stop this insanity let's all get back to work together so I'm hopeful for him and I'm hopeful for our state I want my children to want to come back to North Carolina I've got a daughter in California a son in Arizona and a daughter who wants to move to Oregon to go to nursing school so you got a son in Tucson Arizona right? I have a son in Tucson Arizona yeah actually you know I've been to Winslow Arizona and Did the, the Eagles lied because I was there with a couple other guys, and we were looking for that girl, my lord, in the flatbed Ford, and slowing down to take a look. And at we didn't see a dang did they, one. Did they put a, a statue there? They did. Yeah, that's pretty that's, cool. Uh, but my, my son told me that. I haven't seen that yet. I, I love the Eagles. I had high hopes, Howard, and they, Arizona let me down. Ha. I got Arizona's nothing. Arizona is another beautiful state. You can go from rolling desert sands in the south, where you're doing dune buggies, all the way up to skiing to in the snow mountains at the that Grand amazing? Canyon. In one state, it is an amazing state. Um, would it so? So one of the most over uh, overlooked areas as far as states is Arkansas and the Carolinas. But um, on Dentaltown, it's it's the free classified ads. There's six thousand and fifty free classified ads. It is the. I mean, I've had more people, more associates found a job, more dentists found an associate, more people sold a practice. I mean, it's amazing. But give advice from both ends. My partner, Dr. Steve Hatcher, where do you think he found out about my practice on Dentaltown? 
Well, you it, you didn't know that he, he saw an ad, ad, ad. I worked with Frank Brown out of Dallas, Texas. Watson Brown Associates. Yeah. Have you met Frank before? I don't know. He's a star. He's an attorney with a master's in tax. All he does is dental transitions. Well, and so he, fix he, him up for a podcast with him. We should do that anyway. He just had a picture of my reception area, which is beautiful, and his ad said Piedmont, North Carolina, because I didn't want it public that it was me. Yet I didn't want patients leaving because oh, you're retiring. And um, I mean, I'm very upfront about it, but I just won't, didn't want my name associated with it. Yeah. And Dr. Hatcher, who's been a longtime townie, and he was thumbing through Dental Town, scrolling, and saw a picture, and he said, "That's Mark Hyman's reception room." And he sent me an email: "Can we have a private conversation?" I thought, "What's he want? Marital advice?" You know, I've been married 32 years, Good as job. I like to say, 10 of the happiest years of my life. <laughs> the teenage daughter thing almost killed us. And Dr. Steve came over and said, "Are you trying to?" transition the practice sell the practice I said you know I want to start the transition the time I was 57 years old I said I'm not dead yet you know my grandfather worked till he was 95 died at 96 my pop died at 90 I'm not going anywhere but I'm just again love the privilege of teaching and coaching and I'm just looking to do some other things and he circled the office once walked around and said I'll take it and it just was just like that and so that was the end of April and in September, so he moved his practice. He into moved yours. the adult practice into mine. He was practicing with his wife, Sonia Sharani, who's a tremendously successful pediatric dentist, just building her business. But she's a, a so what, fabulous. What went wrong in her childhood that made her want to be a pediatric dentist? What went wrong in her did, childhood? Did her mom drop her? You know, or, that's a good question. Or except is she trying to do it. My my my, my sister, that's a nun. She says she always prays uh, for the poor souls in purgatory. Is, did she become a pediatric dentist for all that pain and suffering? You know, I think there's and a chance. offers up to the poor souls in purgatory? You know that God has a special place in, <laughs> in his or her heart for pediatric dentists. And I actually love pedo. I don't find kids that hard. You just... Really? The parents are the problem. If right. you can get rid of them, one of the first things I'll do, and your listeners ought to try this, Howard, particularly with young boys, is you take the air water syringe and have them set it in the fold of their elbow here. And you bend it, and then you squeeze the air, and it makes a very noise, and the boys go nuts in their ears. It's the simplest thing. I'll just sit right up front. I'll say, check, awesome. check this out. And the first thing we do is make noises, and then I squirt them with the air water gun and have them raise their feet, and we count teeth, and we put on Kirby video from Casey. And I just don't find pedo that hard. I just, at, at our age, you have less tolerance. There are less kids in the practice. And, um, and Sona, I've watched her work with kids. She's unbelievable. Yeah. And she's beautiful and, and brilliant and just smiles and nods and says, we're but doing I, this. But I always thought one advantage a pediatric dentist has when, when a kid walks in and, and um, they're all kids, I, I think it puts them in a different frame of mind than when they come in and they're the kid and everyone else is adults. That's interesting. I think you're correct. And, and I've, also, I've also noticed with my raising four boys and now two grandchildren that um, a 54-year-old grandpa can't compete with a... 21 year old uncle yep and the 21 year uncle can't compete with a seven year old cousin i mean when, when you're when you're a five-year-old monkey and you see a seven-year-old cousin that's your idol gr grandpa grandpa just disappeared your uncle's just disappeared I, I think kids are magnificently magnified on kids their own size yep and it's interesting how age makes such a difference you think about when someone's a year ahead of you in school two years ahead of you in high school if you were a freshman and a senior talked to you, that was a big deal. Then once you get on into dental school, once you get into the world, the age doesn't, it's not as magnified, but yeah. the, the small age differences are. You pointed out a neat thing, Howard. Dr. Hatcher was pr practicing with his wife, who's a pediatric dentist. So you're trying to do high-end dentistry, cosmetic reconstructive, Panky Dawson, Koi Spear, implant, Mish implant, molar endo with microscope and have a screaming two-year-old in the operatory next door. It's mix and milk and meat. It doesn't fit. So he moved the adult portion of his practice into our practice. And we've got eight beautiful operatories, eight deck equipment, eight digidocs, eight isolites, lasers, cava bombs for the hyenas, for the hygienists. It's, uh, it's a great place to practice. It's you, you a great way to ADEC. practice. You mentioned Did you ever meet Ken, Ken Austin? I did, did not. So Ken Austin, um, that was the most amazing story. Um, when I travel around the country, when we were a little on vacation and we went on vacation, dad wanted to go to a Six Flags over anywhere. And then what did that town make and then go visit those factories? Right. So we, when we were in Detroit, we saw, um, when, we, when it was time to buy our next filing station wagon, 
we went to Detroit and we had already bought it and we got to watch our station wagon be made. That's amazing. From start to finish. When we were in St. Louis, Budweiser, uh, Denver, Coors, which Coors was an amazing place because the old man Coors was an old time rancher, so he made his own uh, glass for his own bottles. He actually had the first dental porcelain a hundred years ago. I did not know that. Coors Manufacturing, because they were making all their own bottles, and one of their scientists says, this could be uh, for dental porcelain. And so Brilliant. Coors had a dental porcelain for a long time. Uh, but, um, so I kind of carry that tradition with my kids, and we I was lecturing, and um, um, ADEC was out in Oregon, and it was an amazing story because the boys remembered uh, Ken likes to restore cars. His his fantasy, he takes his money, he'll find some 100-year-old car in the middle of the field and restore it to perfection. But ADEC, his idol was Henry Ford. Gotcha. And what he liked and respected so much about Henry Ford and redoing cars is that every ADEC chair, so if you're missing a bolt, you could find a 40-year-old ADEC chair, pull out the exact same bolt, and it'll work. Wow. And so Henry Ford, um, the reason Fords were so worshipped is because your 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 axle broke, but you know your cousin Frank has a cornfield 20 miles away, and there's an old Model T in, in the creek, and you could go down there and pull out that bolt. So it was all interchangeable parts. He only had to make one design change, and the whole story of Ada chairs. You know what it was? As Americans become obese. Uh, when you lean them back, some of the really of us started to fall back, so they had to get a bigger plate. That was the only design change. And the reason I want to make this That's point amazing. is what Pete, what Dennis don't realize about um, ADEC is how long does an ADEC chair last? Well, one thing Dr. Steve saw when he looked around our office after tw we, I bought the office and redid it in 2005, so 12 years later it looked brand new. The ADEC equipment looked brand new. The ADEC chair lasts longer than the dentist. End of story. Yeah, I mean, you buy an ADEC chair, it'll it'll last longer than you. You know, we um, when you work with Patterson or Shine or Benco or whoever you choose to work with, you can try to save a couple nickels, or you say, "What's the finest that we have? What's the finest, highest quality thing?" And that's what makes sense to me. And so we did that for the office. You ask, why do we choose DigiDoc? Because it's the finest that you have. Why do we have eight isolites? It's the finest system to me. We picked a deck because I wanted to spend the money once and do it right, yeah. and not be retooling, rebooting. So, so, so talk about talk about isolate because these uh, these dentists have their assistants um, the whole time they're retracting and suctioning. How but are these dentists are on drugs? Because if isolate went out of business, I would quit doing clinical dentistry because I think it's one of God's gifts to dentistry. If you picture five in one bite block, tongue retractor, cheek retractor, suction, LED light. Initially, dental assistants resisted it. They said, well, you don't need me. I'm like, we need you even more. But now you're running the case. You're keeping your doctor efficient and effective. What, what are your verbal skills chair side if you don't have your isolate in? Don't do this. Don't do that. Move your tongue. Stop that. Don't you feel like a fool? I mean, what, what a, I can't believe people that won't spend two bucks a mouthpiece to cut the time it takes you to procedure 30 to 50%. So I, I've had people in my seminars, Howard, say, well, Dr. Mark, how do you charge for that $2? <laughs> Why do you care? It just took you 30% less time. Hygienist, how long does it take you to do a quad of scaling? Oh, it takes an hour. We'll pop in an isolate and do two quads in an hour. Well, can you do that? Yeah. Oh. Well, I did in the lecture yesterday, I asked how many curing lights do people use during a procedure? And I, I would ask you, Howard, when you're multi supplant, cementing multiple teeth, how many curing lights are you using? Couple. Couple. You, I, I'd be stunned if you weren't. We, we use the flashlight. It's out of De Denmat product, less than 500 bucks. We have two curing lights at every operatory. I mean, why? You use the flashlight? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's easy to clean. It's, it's, it's cordless. And you just grab a bunch of them and nuke them till they glow. Why would you cement four teeth in a row and use one light? So you put in the isolite. And the other big management leadership efficiency that we do is the buffering of our local... We use one set, Dr. Mick Falkel. Have you ever met Mick? He's a, a dentist and a chemist out of California, and he came up with the buffering because the lidocaine is the acidity of lidocaine. It's so 3.5. What, what, what is his name? Dr. Mick Falkel, F-A-L-K-E-L. Uh, okay, hang on. Uh, Mick, M-I-C-K? I, uh, I believe it's M-I-C. M-I-C. Michael is his full name. Okay, M-I-C-H-A-E-L. So the company was Onset. The, pro the, the product was Onset, O-N-S-E-T. 
the company was on Pharma and Aura Pharma bought them and then kind of ran them into the ground. But um, if you use a carp carpula lidocaine, the pH is 3.5. It's the same as lemon juice. So son of a gun burns no matter what you think. You think you're being a gentle dentist and you're burning your patients. So you buffer it with the, with this, with the onset mixing pen. You change the pH from 3.5 to 7.4. You turn the lemon juice into water and your patient's numb in about 90 seconds. Statistically, you give a mandibular block at the 15 minute mark, you're only 67% effective. If you buffer at the two minute so mark, it's at Cape you're 71. Dental.com. Say it again. CapeDental.com. I'm not sure that's it. Is, is that it right there? On pharma mixing? Yep. Onset mixing pen? That's it. That's it? Where can my homies buy that at? Um, well, Aura Pharma owns it now. Benco is, reps it. I think Patterson and Shine did not get a f into it. But uh, Ford, Ford me this uh, but contact. That's, I'll, uh, yeah, but um, share. the company is going to be making a comeback, I think. And it just was a fabulous idea. I started buffering every shot. It costs about $2.50 per patient to give you an extra hour a day. So when people say to me, Howard, oh, poor woe is me. I'm 200 grand in debt, 300 grand in debt. I got no way out. Yeah, you do. You pop in an isolate on every patient. You get an extra hour a day. You buffer all your shots. You got an extra hour a day. You use two curing lights. You're not spending half your time curing. You take a quality photo instead of, I mean, dent, you, Howard, you talk about this. Our colleagues in dentistry have oral diarrhea. They talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, sort of like you and I instead of taking a beautiful photo with your DigiDoc and then you're home free. So I just think it makes a tremendous difference. Again, it's just not that hard to pay attention to these basic business principles and the human relation principles and to be successful. So that, that's, that's, what, that's my hope and prayer for the younger generation of dentists. If you want to have your own practice, you can still do it. You know, the, uh, the idea that what are there, 300 million Americans and half of them don't even go to the dentist? If we increase our utilization 1%, we're so busy you can't see straight. You know, a lot of people on that pH scale, they'll say, well, you know, Diet Coke is 4 pH and um, lemon juice is 3. But what they don't realize, that's a log scale. So the difference between 4 to 3 is tenfold. Yep. And then 3 to 2 is another tenfold. So stomach acid, GERD, is another, is it, is it tenfold each or a hundredfold each? You know, that's why I was a psychology major, not a yeah. chemistry major. It, it, it's 10 or, it, it's log, it, it's 10 or a hundred. So um, it, it's amazing how um, dentists know that um, the difference between bottled water seven and Diet Coke four is a game changer. Lemon to three is a game changer, but four to three is a tenfold. That's then amazing. three to two, a tenfold. Yep. And then when they're released, when they're bulimia, and um, when they have GERD, yep. um, a lot of alcoholics um, throw up a lot at night. They, they over drank, so they, they, they're throwing up, or the first thing they do when they get up in the morning is throw up, and that 1% pH is just unbelievable. Devastating. Devastating on their teeth. I've had to restore a couple people with that level, with horrible GERD wear and, uh, and some bulimics. I want to. I want to. I want to talk to you about something that's uh, very, very controversial. Bring it on. And that that is, you're a big Cirac fan. Yeah. But she's sitting there thinking, Mark, I got three hundred and fifty thousand dollars of student loans. You bought two Cirac machines. Yeah. That that that's another student loan in debt. I mean. Respect that. Um. So, so here here's so, my deal. Spend so, don't don't spend a hundred grand on a Cirac, yet. Spend five grand on a DigiDoc. Take a picture of every patient. You're gonna add a thousand dollars a day and put that in an account. And by 12 months, you're gonna have 200 grand sitting there. I'm just not that so smart. So you, you believe the intro camera is the the real it, it, it is the single signature most important thing I think any dentist can buy for a five thousand dollar DigiDoc for less than five grand. You got the number one camera with the finest photo, and you use it on everybody. You commit yourself. I think it's immoral for hygienists to scale a big hunk of lower anterior tartar and not have a before and after. Because it's just a cleaning. Why do you want to come back? You must need a new car. Instead of there's a photo of before and after and then they go, I got it now. Now I see what you're talking about. Um, one thing that we're, I talk about in my seminars and I don't know what you do at Today's Dental. Is your business still Today's Dental? Mm -hmm. What a great name. Today'sDental.com. Brilliant. Brilliant. 
Write um, me a Yelp review or a Google review sh- today. Do it while you're driving. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're a funny guy. I, I just think it's amazing to not take during photos because that's what we send with all our insurance claims by a matter of corporate culture we don't file pre-denials with the insurance company that's what I like to call them the pre-authorizations we don't do them so why would you why would you let a secretary at Aetna give you permission to care for someone that chose you as their doctor so that's that's something that I made a decision for my business that when I suggest for the young docs listening to this is add a verbal skill add this sentence please when a patient asks you for pre-denials, for a pre-authorization, it means that you, we, I, we haven't created that sense of urgency to act. So I would love for you to add the statement, can I ask you a question? What are you gonna do if they don't pay? Because you've taken your DigiDoc photo, they see that they've got a cracked tooth, and I'm trying real hard for the patient to ask them, do you see that, do you know what that is? And they say, my tooth is cracked, you need to fix it. Now can we get a pre-denial? That, that's not a natural flow. But it's okay to ask, well, how much is it? That doesn't mean that they're objecting. They just want to know. You know, you, you just had a rock hit a windshield. You got termites under your house. What do you want me to do about it? So the, the, back to your Sarah question, yeah, it's a lot of money. Except it makes economic sense. You can start just with an acquisition unit. You don't have to get the sixty, seventy thousand dollar milling unit, and you can email your digital impressions to your lab. That right away will start saving. So you can get into into digital dentistry. The the entree pointed in a hundred grand, but to scan and mill in your office, then you do have to step it up. We talked about this at our seminar for Dental Town yesterday, uh, for the townie meeting. Well, how much is a crown in your office? And somebody said, well, twelve hundred. I'm like, no, it's not. It's a hundred dollars a month. That's twenty five dollars a week. That's three dollars a day. That's a cup of Starbucks. You know, it's just not that much money to keep a body part. So I think that's just a smart verbal skill and good business to say, no matter what you charge, it's too much, but break it into small pieces that people can so listen. So at $1,200, do that again. At $1,200 a year. Yeah. What does that cost the patient really over 12 months? That's $100 a month, right? Yeah. Which is $25 a week divided by seven. It's three bucks a day for a crown. No one wants to pay $1,200. So bucks. if you're in Canada, just times that all times two. <laughs> Too funny. But, um, you know, so that's, that's, we defeat ourselves so often in dentistry and we didn't, we're not even in the game. Okay. I want, I want to, I want to, um, change gears completely on you right now. Bring it on. You, you got three children. I got four. Um, let's pretend that your daughter just walked out of dental school, uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, $350,000 in debt. Walker. From I just graduated a third of a million dollars in debt to someday I own my own office. Oh, come here, come here, join us. Come photobomb us. Oh my God, we just got a special guest. Ladies and gentlemen. man himself. Hey, I, want, I, I want, just want to say one thing. The AACD just had David speak, uh, honored him as a official legend of dentistry. Wow! I called that 30 years ago when I met you in 19. I, uh, that. I think in 1987 <clears throat> I first heard you lecture. I went to LVI um, when it was just, just you and Bill. I know. But this man, I remember. this man, hey so Zach, alive. Zach, get our picture. This this guy is truly a legend, and I have had so many people in my life tell me that. Uh, we'll take Jen Robinson of um, yeah. Janicki's wife. So many people just told me you're just a natural born teacher. You'd rather teach. You'd probably rather t- you'd probably rather teach dentistry for free than do anything. I mean, you're just a hell of a teacher. I do and need to. I do so need to pay my rent, but you uh, did so free, much. Free would be good. You did so much well, for this. I mean, that's been you know, my heart. when you're passionate about what you do, it's easy. So yeah. you're right. It is absolutely fun. So what are you doing right now? You know. Well, finish our finish our podcast. Can you join me? I was never this young and handsome. I hate him. Do you want Zach to find a chair? 